Welcome to the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on vibrations and waves. The topic of this video is the Doppler effect. And we want to know what is the Doppler effect, why does it occur, and what are the mathematics associated with it. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. Let's suppose we have a water bug that periodically disturbs the water. The result is a series of disturbances or wavefronts would be produced that travel at the same speed in all directions. These circular wavefronts would be concentric in nature and centered at the same location, the bug's position. But if the bug were to move to the right as it periodically disturbs the water, again a series of circular wavefronts would be formed, but each circular wavefront would be centered at a different location, giving the pattern that you see here. The Doppler effect is observed any time we have a source of waves, such as the bug disturbing the water, that is moving with respect to some observer. The actual effect that is observed depends upon whether the bug is moving towards the observer or away from the observer. Let's suppose that points A and B in the diagram represent two observers in stationary boats upon the water. The Doppler effect would not be observed in this situation because there's no motion of the bug relative to the observers. Each one of the observers would observe the waves approaching their boat at the same frequency. But in the case of the bug moving to the right, the two observers would observe the waves reaching their boat at different frequencies. Observer B on the right, to whom the bug is approaching, would observe the waves approaching its boat at a higher frequency than observer A would observe waves reaching its boat. The Doppler effect is the effect that is produced when the source of waves is moving with respect to an observer. It causes an apparent upward shift in frequency for any observer towards whom the source is approaching. And it causes a downward shift in frequency for any observer from whom the source is receding. Here the word receding means to move away from. In the case of the bug moving to the right as it disturbs the water at a periodic frequency, Observers A and observers B would observe two different frequencies, and each frequency would be different than the frequency at which the bug actually creates the waves. Because the bug is moving away from observer A, observer A hears or observes a frequency that is less than the frequency at which the waves are created by the bug. And because the bug is moving towards observer B, observer B observes a frequency that is higher than the actual frequency at which the bug is creating these disturbances. The Doppler effect assumes that there's relative motion between an observer and the source of waves. That means that the source of waves could be moving, or the observer could be moving, or both source and observer could be moving, but moving with a different velocity. Let's suppose that we have an ambulance speeding down the highway with its siren on and two observers who are stationary on the sidewalk. Because the ambulance is moving away from observer A, observer A hears the sound of the siren at a lower pitch or frequency. And because the ambulance is approaching observer B, observer B hears the sound of the siren at a higher pitch or frequency. This is the Doppler effect. But why does it occur? The effect occurs because each successive wave has its center positioned at a location that is closer to observer B than to observer A. The distance that such waves need to travel to reach observer B is less than the distance that they need to travel to reach observer A. With less distance to travel, waves will reach observer B at a higher frequency than they reach observer A. A mathematical formula known as the Doppler equation can be used to calculate the frequency that an observer observes, as long as you know the speed of the source, the frequency of the source, and the speed at which waves travel. The equation looks like this, where the left side is the frequency that the observer observes. You will note that in the denominator there's a plus or a minus sign. You would insert the minus sign as long as the source is moving towards the observer. This would cause the whole denominator to be less than one, and the the frequency of the observer to be greater than the frequency created by the source. And you would use a positive sign if the source is moving away from the observer. This causes the whole denominator to be greater than 1 and the frequency observed to be less than the frequency created by the source. 
Now we're going to use this equation in order to solve a problem about an ambulance that's moving down the highway at 28 meters per second with its siren on producing a 750 hertz sound waves. Those sound waves travel through the air at 340 meters per second and we want to determine the frequency observed by the observer as the ambulance is approaching and as it recedes from the observer. We want to find the left side of the equation. On the right side of the equation we know that the 28 meters per second is the V of the source that goes in the and the 340 meters per second is the V of the sound wave. That goes for V wave in the denominator. In the numerator, the frequency of the source is 750 hertz. Now, I want to first calculate the frequency observed as the ambulance is approaching the observer. So I put all those numbers in the right spot and I select the minus sign in the denominator. That makes the denominator less than one and it's going to give me a frequency that's greater than the frequency of the source. I evaluate the denominator first and then divide the 750 of the numerator by my evaluated denominator and I get 817, about 820 hertz. Now I'm going to repeat the same process with all the same numbers for the case of the ambulance moving away from the observer. And all the same numbers go in all the same places. The only difference is I'm using the plus sign in the denominator. That makes that denominator greater than 1. I evaluate the denominator and then I divide my 750 by the denominator and I get a result of 693 hertz or about 690 hertz. You'll note here that the frequency observed as the ambulance approaches is greater than the siren's frequency of 750 hertz. And the frequency observed as the ambulance moves away from the observer is less than the siren's frequency of 750 hertz. The equation we've seen thus far has been for a moving source and a stationary observer. Now we'll look at the case of the observer is moving and the source of waves is stationary. In order to solve for the frequency observed by the observer, we know, need to know the frequency of the source, the speed at which the observer is moving towards or away from the source, and we need to know the speed of waves. Here's the equation. You'll notice on the right side there's a plus or a minus sign inside of the parentheses. We will use a plus sign if the observer is approaching the source. That makes everything inside the parentheses greater than 1 and thus the frequency observed by the observer to be greater than the frequency of the source. On the other hand, we'll use a negative sign if the observer is moving away from the source. That makes everything inside the parentheses less than 1 and the frequency observed by the observer to be less than the frequency of the source. Now let's use this equation to solve this problem about a malfunctioning horn on a parked car. The observer is moving. The horn is the source of waves and it produces sound waves at 625 hertz. That's the frequency of the source in the equation. And I know that 24 meters per second is the speed of the observer and the 345 meters per second is the speed of the wave. So I'm going to get those numbers in the right spot first to calculate the frequency observed by the observer when that observer is moving towards the horn. So when I do that, I get all these numbers in the right spot, but I'm going to use the plus sign inside the parentheses. That makes everything inside that parentheses greater than 1. I evaluate the parentheses and then I multiply by 625 hertz and I get 668 hertz as the frequency observed while approaching the horn. Now I'm going to do the case of the observer is moving away from the horn. I take all the same numbers and I put them in all the same places. The difference is, is that inside the parentheses I use a minus sign whenever the observer is moving away from the source. That makes everything inside the parentheses less than 1. I take that number and multiply it by 625 hertz and I get 582 hertz is the frequency observed while the observer is moving away from the horn. Now it's useful once more to note that as the observer approaches the source, the observer hears a frequency that is higher than the actual horn's frequency. And as the observer moves away from the source, the observer observes a frequency that is actually lower than the horn's frequency. It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are three resources that you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each of them in the description section of this video. You have a Minds on Physics mission that is just perfect for the conceptual side of this topic, a calculator pad problem set that suits you perfectly 
for the mathematical side. And if you need to brush up on some ideas, try our tutorial page. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.